Hello everyone, our group is made up of three aspiring social workers interested in the topic of COVID-19 and how it is affecting the young children in our current society. My team members are Leilani Batak, Julia Chu, and me, Eileen Hurtado. Our goal is to educate others, including ourselves, on what we can do within our communities to help children better understand this topic. We grew interest in this topic when we realized children everywhere around the world had to learn how to quickly adapt to their new normal. It's hard on us as adults, so in this presentation we want to discuss the impacts and problems COVID-19 has had on children and some solutions we have found promising for the future. The global pandemic has affected every social group at different levels. However, to emphasize our particular demographic, when this pandemic hit its first peak, Nearly over 55 million U.S. school-aged children were forced to stay home. They not only lacked normality, but they were also faced with many challenges. Due to the disruptions caused by this pandemic, schools had to shut down. This caused the main source of food and nutrition for many students to be taken away. It also emphasized the opportunity gap known as the digital divide. And lastly, it withdrew students from proper guidance connected to school, but also their mental health. We envision the issues being solved through providing equitable and accessible resources through the three R's. First, relief, where schools provide urgent resources to students and their families in receiving resources associated with food and technology, pushing the need for equitable internet access and equipment. Second is recovery, with extra investments being provided towards means to prioritize social and emotional learning by increasing and training authority figures such as counselors, social workers, and even teachers who help their students through issues they are faced with through guidance connected to school but also to their mental health. Lastly, rebuilding, where new educational policies are built that make it necessary that all gaps opportunity, technical, and more be recognized. Policies that acknowledge and address the impacts of set gaps and prioritize the students who fall into the groups who are faced with them. We've come up with some micro-level solutions for parents, teachers, maybe even you can act upon to help students who need extra support. For example, check-ins with students struggling in class that can be either virtually or through a phone call gives the students an opportunity to speak their thoughts and emotions. This also helps us know if they need any other aid with like tutoring or food resources. Expanding on the check-ins, social workers can relay the need of low-income students to school about the scarce resources needed. The lack of resources causes them to miss out on school when they don't have all the materials they need and ultimately leave them falling behind compared to others. This would help students because they would be able to get better grades while also providing them with a nutritious meal. Building onto nutritious meals, another micro-level strategy that could be implemented is donating food along with handing out the food to children and their families who may not have the funds during this time. This could be through food drives where schools pass out food that would be donated from staff, organizations, and the community, which would be held outside of familiar places such as parks and schools. We want to promote disease prevention efforts in a way children will understand, which can help reduce anxiety. We want to provide therapy to children who have experienced any kind of trauma, and we also want to make it clear what mental health is to parents and how they can be aware of any signs that their child may not be doing okay. For example, difficulty sleeping, anger, and lack of communication. Now stopping there, another strategy is social workers within schools can provide extra guidance through creating short videos, educational and informational to help parents relieve any stressors their children are facing, which in turn could also relieve stresses they are too experiencing. Going on to macro solutions, the first strategy would be building off of one of our micro solutions, where instead of teachers checking in on their students' needs, there would be a policy built into the districts where they accumulate a census of all the different schools and understand which schools are faced with scarce resources. And once districts understand which schools need extra resources, they'd prioritize those schools and provide the needed resources, ultimately bringing the gaps such as opportunity and technical, where all students receive the needed materials used for class like laptops, tablets, books, and textbooks. 
but providing resources is just one thing. Another solution is policies being built into schools where the amount of authority figures are increased. Along with the proper training to make sure teachers check in with their students and have more empathy and patience with students as they learn how to work with the circumstances they are faced with at the moment. We would also like to see more social services in schools become more prevalent. A social worker is a vital asset to the school community. They function as a link between students, parents, and the school district. They can help clear obstacles to social and academic success and give students the tools they need to excel in school. Another vision we have in mind for the future is creating a social media platform, whether it be a website or an app, that can be specifically for students to have a safe space for them to feel free to ask questions about school, vent, and share a laugh with others, while also sharing and learning about self-care ideas and tips for others to use. Presentation we've been able to portray a three-part vision, which has been supported by solutions presented ranging from the micro level all the way up to macro. Our main focus was to bring awareness and advocate for school-aged children who are faced with a lack of equitable and accessible resources by explaining the roots of the issue, which is COVID-19, and to explain how we see the issues being mitigated in the future. We as social workers, or as individuals, have the ability to ease this transformational lifestyle as smoothly as possible for school-aged children so they don't feel as alone and make them feel like they can get through these difficult times with these extra resources and strategies provided. To conclude this presentation, we would like to thank you for your time and hearing our ideas, and we hope that you implement some of our advice on how to help children that are close to you cope during this time. Thank you.